What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanashi and Amani Machines. And today, we are playing an El Clasico matchup on the epic map Westfold between Gondor and Isengard in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. And we are playing the white hand with the green color <laughs> because my opponent wanted to pick the white as he's playing with the white city so that's a very interesting matchup that's one of my most favorite matchups actually but i gotta be honest i have not played a lot of 1v1s lately on this map so i don't know the opening as isengard at least against gondor but we will try our best to uh, make this game to a great one and keep in mind that isengard is a very aggressive faction early on and you don't want to give gondor too much time to stall into the lead game in which Gondor unlocks multiple additional summons like a Ranger Summon, Rohirrim Summon, Eagle Summon and also Army of the Dead Summon obviously. And for that reason we need to try our best to win this game as quickly as we can. And our eco is not looking that great. That's why I personally am a big fan of uh, capturing little by little, you know, and keeping what you capture protected. Uh, you know, otherwise you can go for every single settlement, but if you lose them right off the bat, you will actually lose money off that and it's not worth it. So he was actually quite fast to this area with the soldier and we need to fight this. Even on the Alvin Wood, if you have two Uruks like we will have now, we can fight this, right? Two Uruks beat one soldier, easy peasy. And if only two settlements, that's why keeping the second Lumber Mill protected is very important. And if you have to make, make a choice between recruiting either one additional Urukai or actually going for additional settlement, always go for the additional settlement. Because then you can recruit multiple Uruks at the same time. And if you want to get your Uruk pit to level 2, you can just simply recruit one single crossbow man and you should be in a very good spot. Okay, so micro and try our best to win this fight. Okay, in the meantime, uh, we are doing a good job. We can capture this one as well. I'm actually curious what this uh, second soldier is doing. I don't know about that yet. Mm, we need definitely more and more Uruks and also more and more Lambermill workers. Oh, he's coming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this so I get the full money back because I have nothing to defend this, right? If you cancel the building in the construction, you will get the full value back, which we can now use to capture those settlements offensively. So when you play against Gondor and you are keeping the track of the two soldiers, you know, you won't have any more soldiers anytime soon. And for that reason, we can now abuse the fact and capture those settlements offensively. Let's buy this one as well. Now we have in total five settlements outside. And if we can keep those five mills protected, holy guacamole, guys, we are going to grow incredibly rich. Oh, I cannot kill the soldier. I need to reposition myself. Now we should be in a good spot. Okay. So I need to defend this. We need definitely one more Urukai now. And hopefully I will... I mean, I didn't even use Warchant because using Warchant on an Elven Wood is kind of pointless. You won't have any leadership bonuses on the enemy land. And for that reason, um, we were able to save the Warchant, which we can now use to deal with the second soldier. Our eco is not looking that great as we are talking, but uh, trust me, you know, it's going to look amazing in a bit. So, we are in a very good spot, actually, even though our money isn't looking that great. But from these five Lamer Mills, we will be not only getting a lot of money, but also getting the boost bonus and the maximum boost bonus, which is 20% discount on every single structure. It will, for example, make the furnace cost only 280 instead of 350, which is 70 less, which will give us the chance to fill up the base with furnaces in a couple of seconds, you know? And also what I want to do and what I like to do is I want to use my uh, use my workers to always keep scouting. I want to see what is you know what is doing, what is up to. That's going to increase my reaction time and overall give me a huge advantage. Now we can use the Uruks um, to kill those farms. He made a mistake because you need to understand when you play good against evil, your farms are less valuable than the enemy Lamrimir. So if you go one for one, it's actually going to favor the evil faction player. Because lumber mills are generating much more money than uh, farms. And for that reason, it's very important for you to not go one for one. You either go minus one but kill two settlements. It's okay. When Gondor has like two farms outside, it's enough. As long as you can kill like two, three, four mills in exchange. Okay, so we are in a very good spot actually. And look our base, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Look his base and look our base, you know? That's the power of Isengard. It's an economically advanced faction. Definitely the best eco in the entire game. With devastation, with fuel the fires, with industry. You have so many tools to get 
more and more money which you also need because the upgrades the armory the army itself from Isengard is pretty expensive and that's why you need to have a lot of money to you know continue or do maintain your dominance so we need war riders because i want to have some mobile units on the field and after like two three war riders i will also demolish the war pit and go for the armory because there is a chance that he might go for the soldiers of gondor to counter our pikeman spam if you don't go for the soldiers as gondor against isengard isengard can simply spam pikeman all over the map and you will lose entire map control that's why i mean i'm teaching velenorium by the way who's my opponent he's like my padawan <laughs> i'm like the i i hope i'm i wish i'm like obi-wan kenobi you know and he's the skywalker hopefully he's not going to try to kill me because we know how this went you know what i'm saying <laughs> all right let's pick up the palantir i want to use palantir palantir besides revealing the shroud also give us gives us oh no 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 okay that's rest in peace we will lose the creep too that's like the worst case scenario but you know what uh, there is no victory without sacrifices so if you don't know the vision of palantir will also increase your movement speed that will give our war riders the chance to not only chase but also catch those condonites he can micro around he has to micro around if you if he wants to be able to save them if he doesn't you should be able to out damage them with the whole ability so now hold plus um palantir and we will be chasing them down hopefully oh my pikeman i didn't pay attention my bad but it's okay so we will have so much money that we can even skip the industry which you normally shouldn't skip because industry is just too good to skip and go for a tainted land this way we will get the chance to cover the third land and land advantage is huge not only will give the tainted land us the chance to cover the elven wood but also grant us additional um, armor and also fear resistant okay so um i mean we are still keeping those two mills outside protected at his side which is not a good thing i mean basically what he had to do is he had to use the very first gun knight to clean those two lamry mills because they are giving me just too much money we have now two war riders up on the field i can also look to war chant them very very soon i want to creep creeping is essential in battle for middle of one especially if you play isengard against gondor or rohan because what you want to achieve is you want him to deny to collect the necessary power points to unlock ranger special summon early on if he summons rangers early on and you have no war riders yet it will be a disaster you will lose every single pikeman you have in a few seconds you know okay so we need to keep dude westfall is so big <laughs> you need to always perma focus on a map you know okay so what pit can now be demolished we can replace this with them armory and also i want to actually recruit lords i'm a person i believe you need to recruit lords early on and this is like a debatable some people don't like that but i personally like that and that's the only possible way for isengard to get additional damage leadership later on which you will definitely need you will need that so we will recruit lords and hopefully we can creep the trolley eventually in the middle of the map this is gonna get our lords to level three lords is an anti-hero is one of the strongest and the most cost efficient hero in the game and with level three we will get a chance to kill even expensive heroes like legolas for example or boromir or faramir or, or even gimli can be killed when he's not level five yet oh he might come for the, for the base rush but it's okay we will now chase him down with our war riders we have again the vision of palantir be careful crossbowmen i want to put these crossbowmen inside the citadel let's use war chant here and also palantir he cannot fight against us we have whole plus war chant it's more than 80 percent damage which is <laughs> crazy and also armor by the way at the same time because the whole ability got reworked in the patch 2.22 to try to make the war riders a little bit more reliable they lack not in the damage apart oh he has this cross not crossbow man he has this pikeman and soldier combination which is only possible also in the patch 2.22 similar to the urukai and uruk pikeman combination from isengard now gondor also has the chance to combine the tower guards with the gondor soldiers and we cannot fight them as we are talking but our lord is creeping slowly but surely the trollea in the middle of the map again it will make him get level three which is a huge achievement now we have also the tainted land for the worst case scenario to cover the third land you cannot cover the second land you cannot get this many this fast power points unlocked because unlike gondor who has access to the tainted land or elven wood Raider from the beginning of the game we don't have the chance to do that we need three power points hey man thank you so much for the follow on the twitch channel appreciate that guitar n24 hope you're gonna enjoy your stay
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a good spot. We are definitely in a good spot. We are also creeping the troll. That's very good. Um, we have great amount of map control. We don't have full map control, which is hard to achieve as he has soldiers now. And we gotta be careful to not feed too many pikemen to the soldiers. That means whenever we see enemy soldiers, our war carriers have to react fast. Okay, Lourdes killed the troll, it's very, uh, troll in, the, in the middle. He got level 2 and killing the lair is going to grant him level 3. And also Dank, thanks for the follow on the Twitch channel. Holy moly, thank you guys so much. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Okay, so... I mean, as you can see, here's soldiers, right? And we need to kind of answer this. <laughs> Uru Pikeman calls for it and war glad I will... Hey, change the formation. The Swordmen are so incredibly strong versus Pikeman. That's unbelievable. This output should be in a good... Oh, I saw Faramir there. Hold on a second. You know what's going to happen, Faramir? I saw the warning arrow. You know what's going to happen, Faramir, once my loot is done creeping? It's not going to be good for you, my friend. Trust me on that one. So now we have also the Uru Pikeman combination. That's one of the easiest way to kind of contest the enemy tower guard soldier combination because Uruks are stronger than soldiers and pikemen from Isengard are actually stronger and faster than the enemy tower guards so they are not stronger generally but they are stronger in a one-on-one -on -one. so pikemen from Isengard are much more vulnerable against swordmen and against arrows tower guards are a bit more resistant but tower guards have less armor against pikemen damage Palantir to reveal Faramir hey Faramir <laughs> look this pl <laughs> oh poor Faramir did you just try to show your quality? No, 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 no. Carnage. Carnage time. Now, I will show you the most cost-efficient hero in the game. Boom. Heal? Hey, that's gonna buy you maybe two more seconds, but the result is gonna be the same. And almost level 5 with Lourdes too. Let's go. And guess what? You use Elvin Wood, but I have my own tainted land, brother. And now, who now, st you know, stands against the forces of Isengard and shanks against the union of the two towers <laughs> okay we got lords level five as well dude that's like the best case best case scenario now ladies and gentlemen we have additionally 60 percent more dps they are not even war chanted but as they are on the tainted land they have also 30 percent more increased armor now what i want to do is i want to show you the push potential of isengard we want we don't want to give gondor too much time he has the outpost captured but it's okay it's not the end of the world the tower guards are actually quite beefy and tanky, but what's the matter? He's investing so much money into them, though. I mean, you gotta keep in mind that tower guards, they are the most expensive pikemen in the game, right? And if you invest too much money, you will not be able to recruit Gandalf anytime soon. You will not be able you know, to get more Gondorites, shields, heavy armor, forge fleets on them. You need to prioritize, you know what I'm saying? That's very important. Oh, okay, that's bad. Oh my goodness, I made a huge mistake. And the mistake I made is I left my castle unprotected. Oof, that's going to hurt. Losing the Uruk pit now is going to be extremely painful. Okay, I think I'm not gonna retreat with the walk riders. I wanna actually keep fo focusing on the map control. Hey man. Um, Uruk pit, oh, that's really bad. The good thing for us is though he has no um, fleets, so his damage output is not going to be that great. And he won't. And you see, that's the reason because he was getting those tower guard soldier combination, and that's the reason why he has no blades on his continents. Please kill this horse. Please kill this level three horse. Yes, sir. That's very good. So one of the continents is no more problem, but we are losing towers left and right. In power. Oh, actually, my unit is going crazy. He was actually going inside the jeans. And keep focusing on the map control all the time. If, you know, the thing is, even if we lose, let's go for the, for the field of fires for even more money. Even we need to, uh, you know, rep replace the Uruk pit and make also siege forks now from the closest outpost to the enemy castle. Even if we lose the Uruk pit, it's fine because the amount of map control we, co we maintain during all this time is the most important thing. So what he's doing, his tunnel vision focus on our castle, which is not a bad thing. But he has only two Gondor Knights left on the field. What he needs to do instead, or in the meantime, is he needs to try to send soldiers. I mean, Tower Guards, I'm not a big fan of them. They are not bad, don't get me wrong, but they are too expensive, you know, that's the problem. Okay. So, oh, he keeps rushing me. All right, all right, all right. I see you. Oh, he's even, he has even used heal, but he has still no bleeds, as you can see and tell, right? He has still no bleed upgrade on these units. But he's actually improving quite a lot. 
I mean, I'm proud of Velenorion. He used to play Rise of the Witch King in the past. Now he's trying to get better and better in BFME 1. And I'm happy if I can teach him a thing or two. Because we need new generation. We need new players, you know? So he killed my Uruk Pit once again. But it's okay. We have another Outpost and another Uruk Pit. Let's put them inside the Outpost for protection. And we need to try to get the Uruk Pit to level 2 very soon. To, you know, be able to recruit more and more pikemen. Oh, Gondor goes for it. And Rohan will answer. Master the Rohirrim. Hey, man, say no more. I got you. He's coming now. And our lords can draw this sword and use carnage very soon. And at the very same time as he's pressuring my castle, I want to pressure his castle. Okay, so... We have full outpost control. That's very good. Go, go, Ram. Go, go, go. And also, I believe at some point of the game, we will also need to build the siege works. You know? I'm not siege works. The fire rose. That means we need to rebuild the armory. I don't like to build the armory. I mean, I don't like to buy the fire upgrade early on against Gondor. You don't really need that early on. You only need it actually when he goes for a, a for the eagle special summon in the mid to very late game. But until then, you can even win against Gondor when you have no fire. But we are going for a fi for a fire anyway, just to make sure that we have the DPS and the damage output we need to win this game. Okay, so Isengard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're in a good spot. We have so much money. Dude, that's the power of Isengard. Let's demolish the furnace and... Oh, hold on a second. Please kill this wall, man. My lords need to be around this side too. Let's combine them at the same time. And now we need to build an armory or the armory for the fire upgrade. That's very important. Yeah, five power points collected already after the after the field of fires. I mean, this tower guard soldier combination though is so incredibly strong. Holy guacamole! Need more rams, more rams, more rams. Oh man! And also, I gotta be honest, his host is he's from NA, right? I'm from Europe, and there is a huge delay. So trust me, I gotta click multiple times to make stuff happen. You know. Okay, we need fire. Oh, come on now, please, armory. There we go. Nice. Always keep an eye. Always keep an eye on the minimap to see what is going on. Okay, so we need more units to get this to level 2. And then we are good to go. And also, this has to get to level 2 as quickly as we can. Okay, so we are in a good spot. Now we can... I mean, the both the parts of the wall, this one only needs one hit. So we can finish off this... Oh, my, what is my lords doing? Lords, run for your life. Let's kill this farm slowly but surely. Don't give him money, guys. Don't give him money. As we are talking, he has barely any resource in camp. Okay, so we have the combos now. That's good. We have fire rolls. That's also good. And now we can also make some pikemen. Recapture the settlements. This one as well. There we go. And you will at the end of the game, you will also see the money differential. I don't think he can defend this, but maybe... Maybe I'm wrong. So he has a couple of these combos. Maybe I should have, I should be a bit more patient and recruit Saruman just to make sure that we have the, the DPS and the armor. Because Saruman's leadership is also very significant and important. Unlike Warchan, the problem with Warchan is Warchan is not going to last forever, right? Once your Warchan wears off, then your army is going to suffer a lot of DPS and armor and tankiness. And for that reason, you need to rely on heroes. Heroes are more reliable as the leadership is constantly active. As long as your heroes are around and alive. So Lord's level 6 has even the pillage unlocked. Now we can use actually... I want to group them up with the pikemen and use Warchant and go inside the genes. He's summoning... Let's put them in the porcupine formation. He's summoning the rangers, but they won't be able to achieve too much. We can even bring now more units up on the field. You guys can all go. Go, go, go. Money is not a problem for us. We can even buy blades on this combos. We, you know, we don't have to do that. But we can do it anyway. Let's kill the rangers first. Lords. They have 110% more damage, boys. The power points are rising to the sky as well. We have so many power points collected. Seven in total. And we are only 13 away from the... Oh, he's summoning the Gondor cause for it. But at this point, especially with Warchant still being active, he has no chance. Oh, be careful. Don't kill my... Don't kill my... Please. Nice. Good job, Ram. Dude, you see our army. We have our multiple Uruk pits from all around the map. We have a Uruk pit inside the castle. We have Uruk pits at the outpost. And 
we can now have so many production possibilities we can recruit units in a few seconds oh, we gotta be careful about this situation and the problem is i believe in total we lost two war riders in this game let's kill the well he's building multiple towers but it might be a little bit too late for that our war chan is not active anymore so that kind of is a little bit risky but it's fine i think we have enough uh, dps and also you know units to finish off this game what is this level six condonite doing it's not the right timing to focus on the mini on the map control I mean, Isengard army though. Isengard army, guys, in a, in a straight up 1v1 situation against any army is very tough. Especially with Lourdes leadership. When you have no Lourdes leadership, maybe uh, even Rohirrim can kill you. But with Lourdes and Warchant, it's just too strong, you know? But that's the thing. It's an investment into the mid to late game. That's why you are supposed to recruit Lourdes early on. And try to level them up. Don't only recruit them and put them aside. Try to actively focus on your lords and try to get the levels you need. And that's it, boys. In less than 25 minutes, Vedin Orin has been defeated. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on this video. I will see you next time. Let's check the money first of all before we're going to leave. Come on, please. <laughs> what? Come on. Even the... Okay, there we go. 56 to 31,000, guys. You can see the dominance of the Isengard's eco is crazy. Until next time, until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.